I got a few more questions and the first one is from Kim C and Kim C is asking about goggles and basically um, she wants to know if there's male or female goggles or how do you know what's the best kind of goggles to wear well there's a couple things that go into it number one um, there's not really a male and female differentiation between the goggles it's usually adult or youth is usually what you'll run into the more competitive you get the more performance becomes a factor but when you get down to lap swimmers then they're usually pretty concerned with comfort first if you're thinking I have to have comfortable and all I all I'm looking for is ones with big fat pillows on them or big you know padded areas or foam or something like that then you're really kind of uh, selling yourself short as to what you could have as far as a pair of goggles so look for performance first and usually in most cases the foam are not even though you may think they're the most comfortable they really don't perform very well at all uh, sorry foam users out there you want to go with a rubber lining around the eye sockets and actually the best ones the ones that I like the most are either the sweet which are the then you're the, usually the cheapest they're like three bucks four bucks and also there's there's um, like socket rockets and different things like that that really just have um, almost zero padding that goes around the eyes but generally speaking the more padding that you put in there for comfort the less suction that it's actually it's going to have more variables as far as maintaining the suction which means that it you know it, it's just going to not stick to your face quite as well so the less that you have the more you're going to be able to pop those things in there and have them stay all right guys so that's my advice and here's another swimming food for you All right, guys, we're back. And the second question is from Desugin Mihawk. And this swimmer is actually wondering how to actually minimize the splash on butterfly. And this is a big problem that a lot of swimmers uh, struggle with. So here's a couple of tips as far as not booming the hands in. Number one, make sure you develop an actual stroke. You want to have an arm stroke and you don't want to slam those arms over the top. That's actually a, a common practice by a lot of swimmers is just to use their body leverage as a teeter-totter and slam those arms over the top. When you do that, they're, you're, you're going to have, you're going to be splash central. The second piece of advice is to make sure that you're actually hugging close to the surface. The fastest butterflies and the most efficient butterflies and the butterflies that don't have the splash are the ones that hug the surface of the water and they have a long flat stroke and they skim the surface of the water. They could actually, during their stroke, put their thumbs down and skim the surface of the water. That's how flat and long their, their stroke is. Um, the this butterflies that really don't like it, they kind of struggle a little bit, are usually the ones that have that big rainbow stroke over the top. And you're gonna be not going very far, you're gonna have a short distance, you're gonna be beating the water to death, your body's working against you with the water because it's catching so much resistance. All right, guys, here's the free workout for this week. Um, they're going to get progressively more advanced. I'm starting off with 500-yard swims, uh, workouts, and then we're going to get all the way up to like 1,900 yards. It's going to go pretty solid as far as the workouts. But right now, they're easy, but each week, they're going to get a little bit more advanced. So I hope you enjoy it. guys and the last question is from Shranath Pond here hope I'm saying that right as well but this swimmer um, their question is plain and simple it's about open water swimming and there is a little bit of advice that I have for open water swimming just a, a few pieces but they're important if you've never done it if it's something that you plan on doing for a triathlon or you plan on um, that that's your access to water is actually an open water environment then these are things that you need to keep in mind because if you're on an in, enclosed pool then everything's pretty controlled and you, you can set your pace and you can you can set your stroke for a controlled environment when you add open water you've got current you've got waves you got um, direction which you have to maintain so I'll tell you the things that that I would consider um, for a new person moving into open water swimming. 
Number one is a general one. You have to you have to set your body and your mind to know that you have to uh, adjust to a changing environment. The environment is going to change. So you have to allow your brain to accept that fact so we can adjust as needed while you're swimming. Number two is the breathing. Cause most people will be doing the front crawl freestyle while in open water swim because it's really for, uh, you know, for triathlons and things like that. So uh, in the pool, when you're inside in a controlled environment, everything is about minimizing the head motion while you're rolling the head to just kind of sneak a breath. You want everything to, you know, be controlled and the motion to be down and controlled. But as you move into an open water environment, it's actually better to have a little bit higher of a head roll to make sure that you have that water clearance um, so you get that breath and you don't get a mouthful of wave that comes in which catches a lot of swimmers off guard so the number two is actually with the breathing you want to have a little bit more of an exaggerated breath rather than the very slight controlled motion that you may have on the inside pool all right number three is that because you're in an open water environment you need to make sure that you double check your position periodically because you could very easily even though it may seem like you're swimming in a group you could very easily get off track just a little bit and you could be yards and yards and yards and yards and yards swimming in the wrong direction before you catch yourself and you're kind of away from the pack then you have to get yourself back in the right direction so every you know 20 30 40 50 strokes or so give yourself a head check to make sure you're still going in the right direction last helpful hint is that you want your stroke to have enough water clearance while you're swimming as well so usually the uh, the open water swimmers will have a little bit higher of a stroke flirting towards a windmill stroke where the hand comes up it's not hanging below the elbow quite as much it may be parallel or a little bit higher to make sure that they get that clearance over the water um, usually swimmers will try to hug close to the surface but open water swimmers try to have a little bit more of an over-the-top stroke just to make sure that they're not slapping into the water while they're swimming So I hope this is helping you guys out. Don't forget to ask questions. And if this is your first time, don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you guys next Tuesday. All right, guys. Take care. Bye.